can you see my screen also? Like someone can confirm. Yes, yes, I can. I think we should start, right? Can we hear me? I can hear you. Okay, so should we start? Because it's 6.30. I'm sure. I don't know how many participants should be here. Yeah, me neither. Uh, okay, let's okay. wait for one or two minutes or at most and then we can start, right? In meantime, we can, I think that we can go through the introduction, right? So uh, let me first. So my name is Alok. I work uh, as a front-end developer at Kit Concept, and I am from India. And I first started with the Plone uh, back in 2019, like when I contributed in Gatsby Source Plone. Uh, got the source flown as a GSOC student. And after that, uh, after that, I joined the Kit Concept company. And my JavaScript experience, like I am writing React from past two years. So I think that I am most aware of the React and its uh, new improvement and the features and the everything. And I think that from like it's your expectation, but from my uh, point of the trainer, I can say that you after this training you will be uh, you will be uh, having a fair amount of React knowledge, and so that you can start building your re own your re own React app, and I think it will help full. So hi Jacob, can you hear me? Hey, yes, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can. Awesome. Um, can you make me maybe co-host so uh, I can do a bit of ma management of of the call? No but if, if that wo doesn't work, no problem. Mm, how I can make a co-host? I don't really know. Somewhere on Zoom, but if it doesn't work, then never no, no, mind. No, no. I made. Ah, oh, okay. I see. Okay. Uh, May I, can you give me two minutes to also introduce myself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. sure, thanks. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm Jacob. I'm also working for Kit Concept. Um, and I will be assisting Alok in his training today. 
and after that giving uh, my own training on Balto for you guys tomorrow. Um, and um, my task for today is to keep track of the chat and keep track of the questions and stuff uh, for you guys to uh, lift a bit of work of Alok. So, yeah, that's how we'll do it. Then take it away, Alok. Yeah, I think so. So should we, uh, Jacob, should we go through individual introduction or should we start like? You can go ahead. Go ahead with your training. Yeah, maybe it makes much more sense. So, so what will we do in the training? So in training, we are going to look into uh, the React library and the Create React app for the boilerplate for starting the project and a package manager for uh, for managing our dependency, it is called Yarn, but I am going to use NPM uh, because in Apple M1, I have some problem regarding Node. That's why I'm using NPM. But if you have Yarn, you can do it. And we're also going to look uh, out the Redux uh, because uh, Redux is the state management library for the React. Like if you have a bigger app, then you also want to maintain some global state into you, your project. And for that, we will use Redux. For navigating around the, your app, we will be using React Router. It's also a package which will provide you, provide you certain components uh, so that we can uh, navigate your project without reloading it. So that's why we have this single page application. Like when once the app is load, we are not going to reload the page at any point. So I already say, uh, said you like what we expect, like at the end of course, you'll know how to write Basics application using React, Redux, and the React Router. And so, yeah. So uh, you, uh, you can also go to this GitHub repo, like here. Uh, in, in this GitHub uh, repo, you will find all the training uh, chapter in each branch, like go to the clone the repo. And if you install, uh, like once you clone the repo, you can go to the individual branch and where you get the code related to the, that chapter. And it's it's written in the uh, in such a way like if you complete third, and when you check out the fourth, then all the code from the third branch is already present in the fourth. So you do not have to do back and forth and anything. So if so somehow you like uh, do not manage to keep up with us, uh, keep up with us, then we can do that thing. But I, I I'll assure you like I, I will going to also write this uh, code like which you are writing during the training and I will wait for you to finish and everything and I will help you with all the errors and everything we get. So I will be uh, live coding with you so that we have this interactive, uh, interactive session for the training. But uh, for the future, like if you are stuck or you are going the training with your own, you can just clone it and get started with it. It's just for the reference, nothing else. So we go to the training. So on 2020 PlonConf, I also gave the training on the based on the same thing, the React, and here is the recorded video. And I think that after this training also, the video will be uh, uploaded on the YouTube so that you can, uh, so that in the future, you can go through the training at your own pace and you do not have to keep up the pace with us because we have to cover lots of things in just a four hours. So we'll go, so, go fast. So maybe uh, in the future, you can go through uh, by yourself. So in the training and after the training, I will update the video link here once the video is uploaded. So you do not have to worry about anything. You can just go and you, you have the same training which I am giving today. So let's start with our, the main fundamental starting point of the training, like bootstrapping a React project. So installing dependency, like what uh, is needed before we bootstrap a React project. We will be using NPM, NVM uh, for managing the node version. Uh, and why it's important because like uh, you may have different project in your locally, right? And all of them depends on the different node version like node 10, 12, 15, 16, or the latest one. And uh, since you want to change the node uh, version into your particular file or folder, you just use NVM and NPM is very simple 
to just install a specific uh, node version into your locally and you can get started with that project. You do not have to go and re-download all the node and node boundaries uh, whenever you change your project. So we'll, uh, I think that you already have this node into your node uh, lettuce in your locally. And if it's not, please install it because we are going to use it. And we also have a package manager, Yarn, uh, for installing the dependency. As you know that, like React, uh, as we know that, like Redux is a dependency, React router is dependency. And for fetching the library from NPM, we will be using this package manager. So first, let's get started with uh, like uh, running this command npx create react app my app. I already did previously because uh, in uh, because it takes some time to install. But uh, I will give you uh, like one minute to just run this command into your into your terminal like npx create react app and your project name like whatever I I. I think that I have used uh, like this, my Volto app, or you can type whatever, my Volto first app or my Volto second app or anything. So just write this thing like npx create, create react app, my Volto app and press enter. Then we'll get like a bunch of code is running into a terminal. Please confirm in chat, like whether you are able to do it or not. Maybe I can help you or maybe Jacob will give you suggestion regarding like if there is any problem. And once you are done with that thing, like those all loaded thing, just uh, uh, tell me like, hey, I'm done. So I'll get a start. Yeah, it will take some time, like. Yeah, depends on your internet speed. Uh, mostly on all how fast or not fast it is mostly. and by the way also um if you haven't have a question you can both use uh use the voice chat or the text chat up to you um also always good for us to hear a few more voices than the two of us And it also makes the uh, training session more, more interesting because we are only seven of us or eight of us. Yeah. <clears throat> we do not have to be worried about the pace and everything because we are small, so we can just go. Yeah, yeah. I only see only two done in the chat. So maybe you can write some more. Some more people can write down so I can start with them. Then I think I see three done on the chat and I think everybody should be able to do that. Okay. So after that, go to CD my Volto app and open it into the co your code editor, like whichever code editor you use. Can you see my screen? Yes, we do. Yes. 
so let me like this is my two data. Okay, so hi Stephen. Hi. Mm, okay, so once you log in, uh, once you went to your code editor, you'll see this directory, like your create react app already create uh, some files and folder for you. And one such folder is the node modules where all the dependencies is installed. You can see like we have all lots of dependencies which already came with the create react app. Then we have public folder, which is used when you deploy your website uh, into the server so that any people can access. And then we have this source directory and the source directory has all the folder and all the files which we create and, and we will work into this directory only. So the pre, mm, pre file which come from the create react app is first the app.css, which uh, we use for styling our app, app.jss, the uh, app.jsx, like which is used for our entry point of for our the app. Like so this will be the be the our first component which is going to render from the React. And then we have this index.jsx where we are just importing the app component. I'm going to explain all of this in more detail. So let's see. So uh, I will going to explain it, but let's see, like this is the folder structure, which you are going to see, like once you went into the running the project, like when you go to your app and you does this and you run this command. So, but this is the directory structure, which we will get when you first create the uh, project uh, using the create react app. So let's see after what happens when we run the project. So I'm using NPM, you can use here. So this is the thing which we see once we run the yarn start. And this is the component which is getting rendered. So you see like we have this app header class name and then we have the image with the logo. So maybe let me show you, this is the logo, maybe. So this is the logo which you are seeing. And then we have this edit line, like edit app.jss and save to reload. And then we also have a link. Like when you click, it goes to the React documentation. Are we good like till this point? I think so. Okay, so let's move to our first, like what is a React component? Okay, so once we create our app using create React app, the first component which is seal or the first file which we are seeing is this thing, this app.js and what is it? So in React, we write a function and function returns some HTML tag and this tag is get rendered into the DOM or into the browser and this is what we see. So first we are rendering this div and div contains a header. Header has an image and image has a paragraph which you, I already uh, uh, saw you, like seen you, like this is the thing which is like currently rendering and so uh, this is the thing which is currently rendered into the browser. So first of all, like why we are uh, writing this all thing, this HTML into the JS and why it's uh, happening like this. Like we are writing JSX into this uh, uh, JavaScript file and why it's that. So React is a library which give you some method and uh, using that method, you can create your own user interface. And for writing your user interface, we want a template engine for writing and understanding the user interface more simpler because uh, React provides you a method called react.createElement, which does, uh, which creates the element of your UI onto, into the browser. So React comes with a JSX. JSX stands for the JavaScript XML. It is a temp, uh, it is an engine which lets you write the HTML code or HTML tag into your JavaScript file. So you can see that like we are writing the HTML into the JavaScript file. And if you coming from the background of the uh, creating a web browser or website, 
you know that you, you will use a HTML file for creating the user interface. But here we are using, uh, where we are using uh, HTML into the JavaScript. So you can see that, hey, we are writing the HTML, but it's in the JavaScript. But let me remind you, this is not the HTML. It is the JSX. And JSX is an engine which convert this HTML tag into the React elements. So let me uh, uh, show you like how this uh, HTML tag converted into the React uh, create element. So for that, React uses a, a transpiler known as Babel. So uh, let's get to know about what is Babel. So Babel is a transpiler that convert the edge JavaScript into the old ES5 JavaScript that can run in any browser. So what does Babel is that is like it takes your uh, current features of ES6 or the current development to the JavaScript environment and convert this uh, uh, JavaScript 6 ES6 code into JavaScript 5 so that browser can run this code into any browser so that browser can run this code. So let me show you like how, what, what will happen if we convert this code into the, uh, what, the way, what will be the code generator once we transpile using the Babel. So we go to the Babel. And here, if you type, you can see that, right? Like you have written some JSX code, like div class name, and it gets created into the react.create element. So maybe we are thinking that we are writing the HTML, but no, we are writing the JSX, a special template engine, which gets converted into react.create element class. And this is the method which is used by the React for creating your HTML attribute to the DOM. So whatever HTML tag which you are writing, it's get first converted into the react.create element. React create this uh, HTML tag and this tag gets rendered into the object browser. Does it make sense, everybody? Yes, it does. Okay. So now, once we understand that, like we can write the HTML into our JavaScript, means into our JavaScript file. So this is our, the first exercise. We are going to write a question, like what does the Plone Foundation do? And we also write the answer, this thing, which you can copy paste the same thing. And the first exercise is to render this question and the answer here into the browser. So this will be your first, uh, first exercise. And you can, what we can do is like, just replace this code, remove all these things because we do not need, and just write your, just write your HTML code, which you learned or learned from your previous experience and just show this question and answer. Once you are done, uh, please tell me like in the chat, like hey, we are able to complete the 4.2 exercise or just, uh, just write done 4.2 in the chat. Or if you are stuck, do not worry, I will going to show you the solution. I'm just giving you one to two minutes or three minutes because you just like to write the HTML tag, put the question and the answer. And if you have any questions, just feel free to ask because we're not that many people in the training, so we actually have time to take care of intermittent questions. Jacob, your connection is warm, so you can't hear you properly. You just have to write a HTML tag, put the question there and like just the heading or something and put your answer into a paragraph or something like that. Just do that and you'll be able to see that in your browser, this thing here. Is my connection now better? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, what, what I said is that everyone should feel free to ask questions because we are not that many people in the training, which means that we can take care of individual people here. 
but uh, first I have to just make sure to have Anybody able to do that or should I show you? You, uh, if you still stuck, like you can just uh, read this line, like just use the S2 tag for your, like the questions and the P tag for your answer. And you can use the on order list to put over those two things, like two, two questions and the answer. So use an on order list, put an S2 tag and write a question and then use a P tag to the answer. If you are still stuck. Should I show you? Like, can anybody confirm like whether they are done or should I show? Okay, so let me show you the solution. So what I am what I am telling you to do is like remove this all thing, like which I already said, remove it, write a another list. Right, and then you have to put a li. And I am just writing the HTML, so you can see that, but it is something different. So I just use an S2 tag and I copy the question. I push the here, then we have to use an P tag. We put the answer into the P tag. Right, we create another ally. This is the same thing which you which you might done if you are creating a website and we have to show a question on the answer list. We will do the same thing like we'll create an order list and S2 for the question and paragraph for the answer. Okay, then we'll save it and we'll go to the Chrome and here we are. You see, now I have a question and the answer. I have the question and the answer. You can also see the solution by clicking here, but I will not recommend. But if you still start, just copy it and paste it into your app. Like just remove the function and put it there. And you can also remove this thing because we are not using it now. Are you able to do that? Like anybody in the chat confirms that like they are done. Okay, Simon. Anybody else? Like if, we are, if they are following. 
okay? Okay, Stephen, can you can ask your question by just unmuting yourself? Okay, so he was basically saying done. Yes, I was just saying that, that I'm done, not that I have a question. Sorry. Okay, so this is your first React component, which you made. And it's now live, and you can see it on your localhost 3000. So at the end, this is the same thing which I explained earlier, like uh, create React app, create some boilerplate, and JSX is a special format where it seems you are writing HTML code, but before execution, the source is first transformed to a valid JavaScript. The same thing, the div, ULP, and the other tags in this code are first transpiled into a valid JavaScript code using the function react.create element. And create react automatically does it for you because it already comes with all the buildings like the Webpack and the Babel. And at the end of the code, like at the end of a file, you will see this export thing. And this is the ES6 module uh, export. So if you do not know, like how the how you can export your file from your uh, from your file, you can go to the ESX module do, uh, documentation uh, here, JavaScript module to see uh, to know like how it's work, how you can export. But mainly there are two type of export. The first one is the default one. Like you can uh, default your file using this thing, like export default app, and another syntax will be like export this thing and app right but this is this will be called with the named import type because like when you export a named uh, named function you can only import it by using its name also like once you import this use, uh, using this syntax app you can only import it using this syntax by using the same name like app but if you export it using default export what you can do is you can put any name here like banana from dot app, like from any file. So that's the only difference. Like if you are importing a export default, you can use any name, but if you are importing an a named export, you have to write a curly braces and an app. Does it make sense? I think so. That's the only thing that you need to know. Other than that, it will be fine. Like if you go through the documentation, you learn lots of things. Right. So now, now we are going to style our component. Right. So how you can, the first thing is like uh, when you started like creating a website is like create your skeleton for the UI, like which we created, which we, uh, we created here, this thing. And now you have, the second thing will be come to uh, come to is a styling. How we are going to style this component. For a styling component, we, we do not have to do anything, right? You just create a dot dot uh, your file dot CSS file, and you will write all your CSS code there, and that will be get applied to your HTML code. So it it is the same thing like which you write into the HTML, like define your class uh, into the CSS file and use it into your app dot js file. So let me show you, like if you want to style this thing. So that's it. that will be our second exercise, like style the component so that the dot on each item is removed and the question is underlined. So what you have to do is like, you have to remove this style, this thingy, the dot thingy, and put a underline uh, uh, just below this S2 tag, about uh, just below the question. Just do that. Like what do you have to do? Just go to the app.css file, remove all those things. You do not need it. Just write a class name here, a class name like here, a class name like on the list item, a class name onto the li uh, list item, and write your class uh, like the CSS declaration into this file and you are done. That's the simple thing which you have to do. I'll give you like two or three minutes because it has some quirks in at the end like
please do not see the solution. First, try it yourself. Then I, I, I will show you like how to do that. And then we can go through the solution and discuss everything. And if you have any question, feel free to ask. Like. Are you able to do that? Like remove that dot and put the underline below the S2? Great, Marco. Okay, so uh, we already go, I already gave you like two or three minutes. So let me show you like how you can do it. So what I uh, told you to do is like, just write a class name. Okay, so if you are writing an HTML, you are going to write this thing, like you write this class, right? And after writing the class, you provide your class name, like whatever. Like here we will use the FAQ item, right? But since, you know that this li is not a pure html tag this is going to be converted into a javascript object and javascript already has a class attribute like a class keyword so this is the reserve keyword into the javascript you cannot use it in javascript anywhere you can only use it for defining a new class into your javascript file so instead of class the JSX provide you to write it class name. So you can uh, declare a class using this keyword, the class name into the JSX. You cannot use the class. Otherwise it will give you a warning saying that class is a reserve or something like that. So what I told you to just write a class name and you can put whatever you want, but from the training perspective view, I'm going to use the FAQ item. And for the S2, I'm going to use the class name question. Okay, so now we wired up our the class name in for the li and for s2 we have written the question. Now we are going to app.css. Now you have to write FAQ item. Let me copy it so that. FAQ item, list, style, none, save it. Okay, let's refresh what happened. So we have this FAQ item. Okay, so we also have to import the CSS file. Import process app dot CSS and we also have to put the class name. 
here. And for S2 class name, we have to put this here. So once you do that, you can see that like we now have this, the dot is gone because we removed the list style thing. Now you have to, now I have, we have to put this underline uh, below this S2 tag. So what are the class name? The class name is the question. So we just go to the question. And what will we do? Like text decoration underline. You see? Now we remove the dot from our list item and we also put uh, the underline below the S2 tag. This is the exercise, like a style of component so that the dot on each item is removed and the question is underlined. Everybody is done, I think so. Yeah, so there is a question from the Marcus, like did it, did it but works with class two? Yeah, sometimes, uh, but okay, so let me show you. So I put this class, put this class, let me show you, like go to your React app, go to the console, did you see in the console, you are, it's working because React is able to defer that, like a React is smart enough to figure out that, like, hey, class is an invalid DOM property because class is a keyword into the JavaScript and you are passing the class in a, for a DOM attribute. So what you, it is telling you is that like, uh, telling is like, a, did you mean class name? So what is thus behind the scene is like, when you pass a class, it gets converted into the class name and it gets applied to your list item or the S2 item. But it can, uh, but it will already give you a warning like, hey, this is an invalid DOM property because class is a reserved keyword into the JavaScript. Okay, did you understand, Marcus? Yes, thank you. I just tried it. Yeah, yeah, it's work, but uh, React is smart enough to figure it out. Is like class is not a DOM property or an attribute. But, but only in some, but only in some there are many, 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 many cases, cases where your your break your, your robot voices. Your, your connection is not good. Okay, so we get converted into the class name. Okay, so now you understand this part, right? Everybody, I think so. Okay, understand, okay. So let's go move to our next chapter, like convert to a reusable component. So now you, when you came to hear about the React, you already know that in React, we create a component. Right, so you already uh, every everybody is talking about uh, hey in React we use component we make component we make button component we make alert component and then we combine all of them to create a user interface. So into the similar way in this app we are going to create a, a component, right, which is going to uh, receive our markup. Like since you can see that like we are using this repetitive things. Uh, I can show you into the previous, um, into the create react component. If no, create react component into the exercise thing. Like, let me show you. Like you can see is that, like you are uh, reusing markup twice. Like you are creating a li with the s2 and the p tag, with the s2 and the p tag on the same, uh, in the same component. So what we can do is like, we can create a component which only contains this thing. Like it only ha has one job to do is like, like only render the questions and the answer of the particular list. So this is the component uh, uh, nature into the React. So uh, React is that you can refactor your own markup into multiple components, like into the multiple file, or you can say it into the multiple component and you can use that component to do a particular thing. 
So here we want to create a component which only job is to do is to show the question and the answer. So how we can going to do that? So go to the this thing. So you can uh, so this is the uh, this is what uh, this chapter is for. Like to reuse the mark of the FAQ item, we will split up the code, and that's the thing which I'm talking about. Like we are going to split this li and the, uh, li s2 and the p tag for reusing our marker because we are duplicating it for each question and the answer. The app component will contain just the data of the FAQ item. Like the, for the uh, question and answer, we only uh, store the data into the app JSX and will render a newly created React component called FAQ item. The data is passed to the sub component using properties. I will going to explain what is the properties. In the FAQ item, we'll have to access to the properties as a prop dot question and the app just code will change to this. Okay, so let me first like, do not read this. You can read it like on your own when you are going to training by yourself. So let me explain what we are trying to do. So you can see from the code is, like we have created a FAQ item component, right? And we are only passing this thing, the question, the answer, the question and the answer. So this question and the answer thing, which you can see is called the property. It is same like the HTML data attribute, like for the image tag, you must have seen in image source, like, like if you show the image tag, like you can pass a source attribute, a alt attribute, that's the same thing which, which you can pass for your component, right? So component has their own properties. You can write your component properties name, whatever you want. So you can write in the place of question, you can write question one. You can write whatever the variable you can think of here. And the, the second question will be like, hey, hello, how you are going to access these properties into our FAQ item? So FAQ item function receive a argument called props. And the props has all the attribute which you pass to your component. So here, FAQ item pass two properties. One is question and the second is the answer. Once you create a FAQ item function, it receives an argument called props. And this props has all your properties, like the, this props has a question properties and a answer property. So you can get access to this property just using props.question or props.answer into the, into the FAQ item. Does this make sense? Like which I explained to you. Okay. okay, so I think so, right? So here comes your new exercise. So just copy this code, like we are going to this, let me show you, like, uh, like you have to create uh, just uh, another exercise, then I'm going to show you all at the once, like when I will code it. So here you have the exercise create a FAQ item, like just create a file into this thing, component slash FAQ item. So let me just create it for you. Like just go to the source, create here, create a components, okay? In the components, create a FAQ item dot JSX, okay? So just write a function called FAQ item right? Same as the, whatever you see into the function app, right? And just import this FAQ item like this way, right? In this way, and we'll remove all this code and we only use this thing. So this is the thing which you can do, like you can also copy paste thing because this is the thing. Okay, so we created a FAQ item dot JSX. You have to write this function, like which uh, uh, renders the question and the answer for a, the particular question answer. And this is the app dot JSX, which receives the component from the FAQ item. 
and it will pass the two properties. One is question, the second is answer, the question and the answer. And you have to write a function into the FAQ item of JSX file and write it like FAQ item. And here into the uh, function, you will receive a props. And based on these props, you can just render those markup and you will able to see your question and the answer. Just do it, like just try it. Yeah, so Simon, yes. uh, Simon has a one question like, I just noticed that we do not need a import React. Do you know why? Yes, because uh, the current React, which will might be 17 or 18, 17 or something, like we can see that it's already comes out. The Create React app already comes out with a JSX transform, a new baggable plugin, which already determines, which is already installed into your React app. Like when you are creating a React app, it already knows that, knows that the function is going to create a React component. That's why we do not need to use the React. Previously, if you are uh, if previously if you have a React with 16 or something like that, you have to particularly tell that uh, like when you this this thing import React, it uh, when the Webpack compiles your component, it tells you that hey hey Webpack, this file is the React component, and that's why you have to transform this JSX. But now the the new jsx bevel plugin automatically does it for you because in create track it says that hey if everyone is which is going to create this this file like the js or the jsx this file is going to be transformed with this plugin the jsx transform and that's why you do not you need to write now to now we do not have to write this react anymore yeah. that's mm. Michael, who wants to see the FAQ item file again, can you? Yeah, so this is the FAQ item. We haven't written any single of it, <laughs> but it's the exercise so. which you have to do. Like that's what, that's the, what I am explaining you. Like create a FAQ item component, same as the app component, and just use the previous markup into the return. You can access this question and the answer data by props, like props, and you can access it using props dot question and props dot answer. But you have to do this thing into the FAQ item, not into the app. Just write a simple function with the name and just use our previous markup, the S2 tag and the P tag. Anybody able to do that? And then just one thing, like if you write anything like this, H2, like whatever, into the FAQ items and you receive a props. And if you are writing this thing like props dot answer or question, props dot question, you might not able to see it, your question, which is passed into this world. Let me explain you after that. Like first do your thing, like just try to do that. If you have any problem, just ask me because I know there is one problem which you, you are going to face. Everybody done? 
I at least saw one thumbs up. Thomas is done. Um, yeah. Let's give it another minute and mm -hmm. then we'll continue. And if anyone objects, just scream or spam the chat. By the way, is my audio better now? Yes. Awesome. Okay, so let me go and show you like how we're going to write. Okay, so what I have told you, like just write a simple function like FAQ item. This thing, and I told you to just return a simple markup with li, and li has this S2 thing and we have the p thing right and this feq items receives a props argument it is already it will be provided by the react like whenever you go cause a, a create a component and when you call this component into the feq item this all these properties are going to be present into this props argument which will be automatically passed by the react so this is the thing which I explained you, right? Okay. So now what we are going to do, like how we are going to access this question. So we can write it like that, like which I told you, like props.question. But there is a one trick. Like this props.question is a, is a JavaScript. It's not a valid HTML DOM attribute. So in JSX, to access the JavaScript, you have to provide this curly braces. Once you declare a curly braces, you are in the, the JavaScript land once again. So if I, if I just put curly braces here in this field, like which you are seeing, I can do any JavaScript expression I want. Like I can call a function, like we, let's have, a, Let's think we have an add function like const add a b return a plus b. You see, we can it's you can call this add function here also. So once we declare this curly braces, we, uh, we are once again into the JavaScript world and you can do all the JavaScript expression here. So what are, so maybe you can thinking of, okay, hello, what is expression? So expression is no, expression is just the one thing, like one particular uh, value, like which is returned from this add component. Okay. Did you understand like what I am to, going to uh, try? Like, uh, like in this JavaScript world, you can call any expression which is present into the JavaScript world. And, uh, and then we have a question like what is expression? Expression will be any literals, any variables, any function call which result into a single value. So here, when you call this add function, this add function returning you a single value. So we can write this function, but you can't use any async operation like cons. You can't use a promise there, right? Because this is not a JavaScript expression. Are you able to understand it? 
like what I am trying to say about the curly braces. Yeah, just remember one thing, like once you declare this thing, the curly braces into the JSX, we are in the JavaScript land and you can write any expression you want. And expression contains uh, variables, literals, operators. We can also use and operator or operator, whatever uh, that result into a single uh, value, we can use that because this and uh, gets evaluated as true, false, it does not uh, get evaluated like in the promise or something like it goes to network and make request and anything. We do not do it here. Okay, ask Thomas. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, in the uh, app.js, um, there, the, um, the component is uh, written differently with function app and then props. Okay. And in the, fact, uh, um, in the FAQ item, you use the arrow function. What's the difference in uh, declaring the components this way? And okay. why do you use uh, which one? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, as you know that our new ES6 uh, features provides uh, you this arrow function, right? It is not available into the previous version of ES, uh, ES uh, our JavaScript. So previously for defining a function, you use this thing, right? You write a function keyword, a function name, you provide an argument and you do this thing, right? And when you write this uh, uh, as a props component, like a arrow function, it does not have its own this. It all belongs to this, this thing, right? That's the only thing because the, the arrow function does not use the binding of the this thing. Um, Alok, I think that this keyword is reserved for classes and the arrow function is just a um, more, more, more easy way or quicker way to define a function. No, no, no. Doesn't it? Okay, then, then I'll shut up. Yeah. So the main difference between is that uh, uh, when you write a class into a JavaScript, uh, behind the scene, it's write a function. Uh, maybe it's a long topic, but, but maybe, you, uh, maybe I can show you. Like when you do this class, my component, like which you do into the React, uh, extends, extends react.component, this thing, Right, you use this thing, right? Like for defining a class, like into the React world. So beside, uh, uh, like into the backend, when this code transpires, it gets converted into this thing. Function, my component, this thing. And now we have this dot, all the props or the method you see, and whatever the method you write, like on click, it's get converted into the prototype, like my component, like, let me type if I'm able to type my component oh, yeah. dot prototype dot. Maybe um, let's not, let's not get too deep into this because we've yeah. got so, quite a lot of stuff in front of us. Okay, so let me let me uh, just uh, give you the simple uh, simple uh, definition. Uh, what is the difference between the function, uh, the main function, and this? The first one is that, like uh, this function component, like when you declare this thing, this function, it has this own scope and it has uh, the this keyword binding. Like when you create uh, initiate with this thing, like const my app equals to new uh, app, right, right, Thomas? Then what we'll get is, uh, get will be the, the this binding, like whatever you define between the function, it get preserved and you can access it using the this. You also get the constructor for that function. You also get uh, the methods, like you can write the method into, the, uh, into this function. 
like you can uh, you can go and study like how you can write a method into the function it will be like simple like this dot on click right but you can you can't do that into this the arrow function it is just a simpler way of writing a function without you have to deep dive between anything like the this the prototype and everything does that make sense It is a broader topic, like what is the difference between arrow function and that thing? Does this make sense? Yeah, you can just go go to the link provided by the Jacob and you can see the difference. Okay, we have two more questions, I think. Um, first is Michael who asks um, how oh, we created the add function. Um, I think the add function was only to, uh, as an example on that you can define any function uh, and, or not any yes. function, but any uh, expression uh, and um, call that inside that. That's not necessary for our current task as far as I'm aware. And second, is uh, Simon wants yeah. to know so whether the arrow function uh, have any advantage over the normal function definition um, in terms of performance unlock do you know mm, anything I, about that? I think that the arrow function might be a faster than the main thing, the normal function, like when you write, because when you define this arrow function, it does not have to look into the other space because it does not have the this and you can't define the prototype like you can't write faq item dot prototype if you're familiar with the javascript prototype maybe you you can know that like when you search like when you have any string and you does that like a string like allo dot to uppercase right and when you call it convert this uh, to the uppercase but how this dot to uppercase gets executed you do not define it anywhere into the jar into your file so where does it come from so this uh, this come from the javascript well like this string is an object into the javascript and this string was a already a built-in method called to uppercase and the uh, and then this method uh, it's getting called when you run this javascript and that's uh, how your this thing become an uppercase so uh, if you want to implement this type of uh, thing like you can create an object and that object has some built-in method you can't do you can't do that with the arrow function that's why i think that arrow function will be more performance than the normal function but uh, it does not make any sense to compare this because it is pre-mature optimization you can do uh, you can write anything like whether it will be arrow function or a normal function, but I always carry this arrow function because it is more implicit because you do not have to look uh, anything there, you just write it in the floor. Okay, I think that I, I, I have given the answer for the Simon. So let's proceed. Like what we are doing is like we have to, we are getting a FAQ item, a component, and we are passing two props uh, a question uh, properties and answer properties and in FAQ item we are have the props now you have to just uh, access these props so this is the curly braces for going into the javascript world so I will just write props dot question right for accessing the answer I will just write answer maybe i just misspell something i know okay and at the end i what i have to do i have to use the export default faq item right so what we are, uh, what we have done, like we created a function, like a component. A function receives an argument from the React, and all the properties which is passed to this function, we can access it using props. question. For writing those property into the JSX world, we need to get this curly braces. 
Google into the JavaScript world. And finally, at the end, we have to exp uh, export this function because that's the only way we can access it using the FAQ item. Once we get the FAQ item from the FAQ item.jsx, we render it into the this way, like this thing. We also, I also have to remove this. And we just have to be saved and let's see into our React app. You see, now we are rendering it, right? And uh, let me show you like what happened if you do not do this. You can see like attempt import error does not contain a default export. So you have to provide this. Does it make sense? Anybody like uh, how we do that and why we do that? Okay, so let me tell you like why we do that. Like previously, when you have this component, we have this repetitive li thing and repetitive s2 and the p thing. But since we refactor this thing, this markup, we do not have to write it uh, multiple times. We just created a small component. What it does is just render the question and the answer. And we just import into the app and we just send the data it required and it works. Right? This is why React is uh, efficient. And this is why React is popular into the modern era because you have very complex component. You have a checkout button. And when you click on the checkout, uh, it goes to the stripe, right? We have multiple sidebar, right? We have multiple, uh, like we have an opening model. Like when you go to any modern website, when you click on to any image, it just pop up. How you can create that using a normal HTML? We, you can't, you have a lots of bugs. So what we'll do is like, we just create a separate component for the each thing. For an image, we can create a uh, author, uh, author component. For the, uh, for the button, we can only create a button component like here. And uh, whenever you want a button, just uh, import your component and just write button, like uh, it will, button and it will work, right? That's why the React is efficient and, the, uh, and it is becoming more and more popular because it's making us easier to uh, do the complex tasks in a more manageable way. Like you, you can just take a one piece of the complex problem, solve it, and you can just render it on your screen. Now you uh, understand like how, why we extracted this logic and created a new component. I think it does make sense like now. Okay, so there will be another exercise just for you. Like it's on the same exercise, like just copy all the CSS file, all the CSS which you are written into the app.css, create a FAQ item.css, uh, create a, uh, let me show you, like create a FAQ item.css file into your components file like go to component FAQ item and FAQ item.css and put all your CSS into that file so that we can once again remove this dot and enable this underline between the S2 tab. Just do it. In this way, we understand like how a styling a component will work. Like when you create a multiple component, just to write the CSS file for each component and you just call it into your app, like into your component and it will work. Please do it like it does not take long. Okay, so Simon have one question, like if we separate our CSS into multiple files, do we have to watch out for name classes? Yes, you have to watch out for the name classes 
and that's why we you can see that there is multiple discussion is going into our community like where to use css in js where to use the style like module style css or where we just have to write this uh, scss or dot uh, less files because it already provide you mechanism to generate each your class name uniquely or you just write to your own dot css structure like which you are doing from previously like you just create a one css file and keep continuing with your writing your class name. so yeah you have to be be careful like when you declare the class name yeah when you um when you are using multiple css files there might be a situation where where this is an absolutely valid solution i think when there are name clashes in the end um the the rules for the last imported files will be applied in the end but you need to test that uh, for each case then yeah, but for in the modern solution, like when you are creating the your whole app, like for creating a small app, you do not have to think about that because you already know like what CSS class you have declared. But if you are creating a bigger app, like enterprise app or something like that, you mostly going to use some library, like whether it will be the SSCSS, dot less or a style component or CSS in JS. So you do not have to do anything. No, uh, in this case, we are, you are going to create a new CSS file, faqitem.css. And there you are going to write all the things. Like in, go to your component file folder, create a new faqitem.css and put all, all your CSS from the app.css into this file and it will work. Okay, uh, yes, we are going to remove the app.css file. Yes, we are going to remove it because we do not need it. Okay, so let me show you like what I am telling you to do. Right, so we have this component FAQ items. We'll just go and create a FAQ item dot CSS file. Okay, we are going to app dot CSS. We are just going to copy it. FAQ item dot CSS. Right, I haven't done anything, but if you go to React app, who it's not working. It's not working because we created the FAQ item. But in FAQ item, we are not importing the CSS file. So what we'll do is like, we just import it. Import dot FAQ, FAQ item dot CSS. I missed the slash. Okay, I also missed the class name here. Class name should be FAQ item and class name should be question and once I save it you can see it like the dot is gone and now we have the underline below is true. Everybody able to do that? Like everybody able to be at this situation now? Yes. We, we haven't done anything. We just added the class name, the same which is previously like a fake item. For styling, we need to provide a class name. So we did that, we did that, and we also created a FAQ item.css file where we declare the uh, class declaration for particular name and we save it, we import it. And that's where it gets rendered. Okay. So now we move to the 6.3, like property validation. 
Okay, so you know that like what is property? Like whenever you create a component, this question and the answer is called the properties for the, that particular component. So React has a built-in mechanism to validate these properties being passed into the component. When incorrect values are passed, we'll receive a warning in the console. In the ever example, you have to add an extra import. Okay, so what is this thing, this property validation and why you use that? Okay, so now you are have this question and the answer, right? You are passing this property and this FAQ items are receiving this properties, the question and the answer. What does this component is doing? This component only has to render the question and the answer. It's only job to render is the question and the answer. What happened if we passed an author name, like we passed an object, like a question object. This is like, let's see, hello, this is my name, right? And when you save it, right? So, you also have to write. Okay, so you have to do this thing. Okay, so here what uh, I am doing is that like, this FAQ item have these properties, like the question and the answer, right? And what happened if you provide the properties of the FAQ item question to be an object instead of a string? What will be happen? Let's see. Like you go to the React app and you'll see an error, right? Okay, so why it is that? Like uh, since when we are creating a large app, maybe these properties will be coming from the backend, right? From the backend or anywhere, uh, from where we are fetching the data, whether it be the serverless cloud or anywhere. So what we want to do is that we want to check the properties of this component. Like we want these properties to be a particular value. Like this question property will be always a string. This answer property should be always be a string. It should not be an array. It should not be a null. It should not be a particular thing which you do not want to do that, right? Which you do not want to receive that. So for that, for checking this behavior, like whatever the FAQ item, getting the properties from its parent, whether it's the same thing or not, you have to write a validation argument. And in React, we use this validation using a prop types dependency, right? So this prop type dependency provide you a certain method which is used to check whether the component is getting the right properties or the not. So we are going to write this validation. So if uh, we are going to write a validation, like if our component is getting a wrong properties, which you do not want, we'll see a error into the console. So what we have to do, like, we have to import a dependency. Dependency is prop types. Okay. Okay, so this prop ties gives you an uh, gives you a, a, a object called prop types, and this prop ties has a certain method which checks particular value whether this particular value has the same uh, uh, same type or not. So for checking the prop types, you have to declare a static function. This FAQ item dot prop types. Uh, this thing, which you are seeing this, I have to write it in correct way. Prop types. Okay, so you can see is that this, this is the FAQ item, right? This is the function. And whatever, this is the function. And this thing, dot prop types, you see thing, this is called the static, a static method for that particular uh, uh, static method for that particular function. 
so this thing will be get run by the react internally when uh, when this component is getting rendered so let uh, let me show you like how it's work so once uh, uh, your app uploaded into the browser this faq item component gets called once it's called the first thing will be happen is that is this static method gets called and this method will be checking all your types so here we what we want to type uh, what we want to check we want to check that the question is a string and is required like whenever you want to render a effect to item component what you have to do you have to provide me an string with the question properties and it should be there it should not be an empty right like you can't uh, render a faq item without a question props we so also want to what an answer an answer should also be a string and is required okay okay so this is app.jsx and what it does it like when uh, when this app.jsx calls this faq item function is first going to run this this method and what this is method is going to do is like it check the question properties so here it is going to check this question properties like whether this property is a string or not so if the properties is not a string it's going to give you a console error so let me show you so if you go to the console Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me let me show you something different. Like, let me first fix this. Then I can just show you. So this is the thing you see. We do not have console. What happened if I provide you a different thing? Like, let's say you provide it an array. So this thing, and then just pass an object with the same alloc my name. Okay, let me find you error object. I think you're only provoking breaking the app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah so you see, ah, that. Uh, in warning, you have this thing failed prop type invalid prop question of type uh, question of type object supplied to FAQ item an expected string you see that's where we are going to find is like why this app broke or why we are uh, not able to see the desired result why because in FAQ item we are saying that question is of type of a string it should not be anything other than a string and that's why react is able to show you an warning hey, hey hello you are passing an object object type to the question, but the expected should be string. That's why we are getting those uh, uh, warning once we removed it. Once we, okay, so once I remove it, I can show you. Once we remove it, we do not get anything. Like, let me refresh for you so that we can see. You see, we do not get any warning. That's why we are, you will see the prop types written in every React component because it checks the properties and what should be the value of properties, the type of the properties this component uses. So you understand it, this prop types? What is this prop type used for? So do we move to the next chapter? I think so. I have a short question. Okay. Um, you wrote your FAQ item as a JSX. When I do that, I get a compilation error. 
I need to use a .js file. Don't know why. <laughs> mm, like, uh, you written the same thing? Or? I wrote the same functions. It's it's all correct. But when I name the file as you did, as a .jsx file, I get an error like the app.js does not find, cannot import, which is funny to me. Yeah, that uh, seems quite you, odd. Can you, can you paste your error into the chat? What would you like to get pasted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that I can see. Like, the error so. message, I think. And if you want, you can you can just go there and you can also go to this thing and you can just copy and paste your photos. It, it's just simply like it doesn't find the FAQ item JavaScript file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, ah, I need to uh, restart the NPM uh, compiler. For no, that. no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, no such file source from FAQ item dot. Are you importing FAQ item into your FAQ item dot JSX? Can you see? Maybe you are trying to import the CSS, but it will be JS. No, no, that's not the problem. In app.js, I have mm -hmm. the import of the components FAQ item, like you have, no problem yeah. at all. Uh, and just remove dot js thing at the end. Just remove it. Wait a second. I have no JS in the end. I have just the same as you do. Well, okay, just, uh, uh, look, as far as I understood the problem is that it works fine when he calls the FAQ item file, the file let's say faq item dot js then everything works fine so right no, no. no. Yeah. correct that's the point <laughs> yeah and it breaks when he renames it to jsx which is super weird in my honest opinion yes it is uh, i didn't write it i mean you first can time. you can just use js instead and it'll work fine because they dot jsx and dot js are basically the same uh the same but why yeah, and maybe you can try to restart and maybe yeah. do this. but for me i do not have to do anything you can see it right because react uh, always uses fast refresh so whatever you make the change it just compiles it for you okay i mean it's not a big deal it's not a big problem just was cu curious what the problem is. Okay, now it's uh, running. Yeah, uh, you are able to see that. No, like... uh, no, no uh, I just have the same issue again. Uh, I did an NPM, I restarted the NPM server. So mm -hmm. still the same problem, but don't matter, don't care about it. It's, it's a minor bug, whatever. Don't care. Mm, yeah, yep. Oh, maybe I can do some research about that in the background and get back to you. That would be awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe why not? Okay, so now we move to our next chapter, like using the snapshot testing. So uh, let me show you like what we have done till this far. Like we created an app component, right? App component uses a another component called FAQ item, right? You have written it. Then we also style this FAQ item using the CSS. We also validate the prop types, like what the prop types should be and what is the type of the properties this FAQ item, item should have. Now, to make our app a better, we also have to write the test so that we can be uh, more uh, confident towards our next changes, which we made after this thing, like after the app improves, like, to launch your app like 1.0 and now you want to refactor it and you do not have any test, then you do not know whether you broke your app or not. So for that, we should have a test which tells you like, hey, you made these changes and this is why uh, this feature is getting broke. 
And once you have this test, you will be able to see that and able to fix it before you release your app or your library or anything. Does that make sense? And for the simplest, we will be going to use the snapshot testing. So let me explain you like what is the snapshot testing is all about. So what does the snap uh, snapshot testing is do is like, it gets your component and it just render your component and store all, all the JSON, uh, uh, all the DOM attribute of your component into the JSON structure and save it into, into the file. And once you made any changes to your component and when you ran, uh, Ran, uh, ran the test, it will regenerate your, uh, it will re-render your component and regenerate the JSON and compares with the previous uh, JSON. And if it it's, does not match, it will be failed. And this failing test will lets you know that like, hey, uh, Alok or someone, like, hey, you made some changes. Do you really want these changes to be get applied? And once you say that, yeah, I want this change, then you can just uh, update that snapshot and you just push to your repo or whatever, uh, wherever you are managing or developing your app. So what does a snapshot uh, does is like, uh, uh, let me give you an example, like uh, how it will be helpful. Like maybe think uh, instead of this question answer, you have an object, like you get a data from the, uh, backend and you have an object with three things. Like maybe you can code it like here, like this thing that uh, this thing like code, uh, you get an object and object in object, we have this author and the book, right? And you have this author name and the book name, right? You have written this author and the book name and suddenly what uh, happened is that is, like someone comes to your uh, code and it just, instead of this uh, uh, object, it tends to be array, right? Or someone just came or write and a test which does not include into your mockup or everything. So what will be happen? This li thing is uh, like, let's say we have uh, an object or an of the two book, book, and author twice, right? And you have this component which renders the book's names and the author name, right? And what happened when third people, another person come and just write a, another book and author. And, he, uh, and when he tries to, uh, tries to uh, release this, uh, uh, release this code or uh, try to push this code or run the test, the test will fail because it will remind the, the person that, hey, previously there is only two author. Uh, previously there is only two author and there is one another author you have added. Do you really want this author to be added or not? Maybe you are, uh, you are responsible for adding six author, right? You have, uh, you have uh, added the six author, but mistake uh, uh, with mistake, you added the two author twice, like the same author twice. Then in test, you can see that, hey, this author is twice, and then you can just come here and remove it. And then you update your test and then it pass and you can just uh, send your code to the, uh, any GitHub repo, like uh, wherever you are deploying or developing. Does it make sense? Like why you are using a snapshot testing? Okay. So now we are going to, uh, what we are going to do is like, First, we'll create a file called FAQ item test.js file. We'll also delete the app.test.js file because we deleted all the initial content of the app.js. So if you go to the app.test.js, where you can see that like we are getting the screen learn react, but since we already delete, like where there is nothing, anything like run react is going to fail. So we are, we are going to remove 
all the app.test.js file. And here we will render the component and assert the markup. So let me show you, then we can write another text by your own. So what we are going to do is like, go to the component, create a FAQ item dot test dot js file into the js file you will import react from from react you can also do not i think that you would you do not need to do this thing import react thing i think i messed it the Training, then you can render from the at the red testing library. Uh, uh, this testing library de uh, dependency dependency is coming from the Create React app. Like once you created your app using Create React app, it already downloaded this library. So we do not need to download this uh, library. And then we'll import the FAQ item. It's already auto import for me, VS Code. And what we'll do is like, we'll write describe, what is this, the FAQ item. And then we'll pass a function, which will be uh, run once we run the test and we'll run the renders, a FAQ item. We'll pass another function. We just check renders our component and check it. And we also have to pass the properties. You can also copy paste it from the training website, but I'm just writing like, you know, like we can write it like this, this way. Okay, so this is it. And then we just do this. Are you able to follow? Like, are you able to uh, write this? I think so. Yes, and then we are going to maybe just kill it. NPM run test, let's see. Maybe I haven't deleted this test, so maybe it give me an error, so I need to trash. Yeah, let me see. Once again, so npm run test. You see, one is passed. So let me show you all the thing. So you, you can see like, we have this FAQ item dot test, right? And we are matching the snapshot. And you see uh, the test already created you a directory in your own component, this is a snapshot. And if you open, it has this thing. So whenever it reruns the test, it will going to match this match this with this object. And if something changes, it, uh, it gives you warning like, hey, it, uh, this thing has been changed. Do you want to update it or not? So let me also tell you like in, 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 instead of my name, I will write Jacob name. And you see one snapshot failed. And you can clearly see there. In the place of Alok, we now have Jacob. So if you want, if you really want like, no, uh, I really want to update this thing, this thing, like I really want to update the Jacob thing. Uh, change my name from Alok to Jacob. 
what you can do is like you have to update this test and how you can do it like uh, just run run npm run test minus u okay you to update them let's see and you see uh, when you see like there is u command so you can pass it to that and you can see that that the one is, uh, snapshot is updated so now my test is passed now i can uh, add it commit it and i can push it to the uh, github or uh, anywhere like where you handle your pro project development so this is why this is important like if you change anything into the description it gets matched to your previous snap no a snapshot and if it's not there it gives you an error locally and so you can manually check it like hey, hey yeah something has changed so did you understand like why you are using the snapshot testing and you can write anything there like you can check it Once you are done, please let me know. And this is the way you can also update your snap toss, a snapshot test. I missed that. How do you update a snapshot? Okay. So let me show you once once more. Like, because I do not want my name to be Jacob. I want my name to be Alok. Right. So you go there. Now let me run test. So I run the npm run test. You see, one snapshot fail. If you go there, you see the Jacob is minus and Alok is added. So you see, let me inspect your code changes or press U, U to update them. So you just press U and one snapshot is updated. Saki soon wants to know whether we should commit snapshot files as part of the source repo. I'd say that would make sense when you're working on a collaborative project because those snapshots are to make sure also um, stuff other people do in the project don't affect the uh, expected rendering of your component because components can also depend on each other and multiple you know, people can uh, work on multiple components. So from my point of view, it would make total sense to commit those. Everybody is on the right pace, like everybody is able to do all the things like till this, this end, like they have this running a snapshot and they, you can also play with like, like change the a snapshot, update it, write your own name, write my name and then check it like it's fails and everything. It makes sense. Like uh, you can also think a snapshot testing is like, is that like, someone goes to your component, like uh, he or she goes to your FAQ item things, and this, uh, and they just change this thing, like the props dot question to be something else, right? And, uh, or they maybe add this thing, like, hey, this is answer, right? This is question. Right, uh, and you wanted this because your designer gave you like, hey, before showing question, we have we have to see the, show this thing. Okay, and what you do is like you just go there. Someone created this, and you do not have the snapshot uh, snapshot testing. It, it just send it, and it gets more, and 
someone who does not know like hey is this not there and uh, so he missed that and if you have this thing like the snapshot testing and if you run the npm run test you can clearly see that like hey it's failed and then you can see that why it's failing because previously what is your name is there but now another line is added like hey this is question and this is not the intended behavior so what you can do is like hey i have to change this so you can you can just go to your file you just remove it to save it and your test fast right so this is the way you can use the snapshot testing into your development so that it 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 makes sure that you render the component which is rendering is perfect and it is returning the same thing uh, whenever you make any change or, or do whatever you want this component should render the question and the answer in a perfect way like the same way it renders in the uh, uh, in the release one two three or four or five five it should be the same okay so now we move to our next chapter like how yeah. to use a state into in your component yeah alok maybe should we take a small break because so uh, i i also uh, think so like so half time break so people can get uh, new drinks or go to the bathroom or just have five minutes five minutes of break or so what do you think what do you think chat like I think that 10 minutes will be fine. Like we can uh, start from 8.30, I think. What do you say? Of course, if you go to- uh, From, I do not know what's in, what's the time, Jacob, in Germany? Um, 16.50. No, 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 the current time. Yeah, current time is uh, 16.50. So uh, maybe we can start 10 to 5. Seven? 10 to 5, you mean yeah. 5, not 7. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Seven is in like two hours. Ten, uh, just next 10 minutes, right? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Okay, okay so our next uh, uh, concept will be like uh, how to use a state in your component. So let me tell you like what is a state. For, uh, let's uh, see, like now we have a hard coded uh, FAQ. Like if I can show you, like if you go to the app.js. Uh, now we have this hard coded uh, question and hard coded answer. And we really do not want, we want to add some more questions, more answers and everything and how we can do that. For into that context, for manipulating the uh, data, uh, particular to a component, we are going to use the state. So what is the state? A state, you can think, uh, think like a state is a memory related to a particular component. So let me give an example. So let's say you have an input field and in input field, you want to write the questions, uh, submit, uh, 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 submitter uh, name. So how we can do that? Like you just want an state or a memory where you want to store the particular name of that person and you can send it to your database or something like that. Uh, you, are, uh, you are doing a shopping on a e-commerce or Amazon. And when you click on to add to the cart and we, you have a component called add to the cart component. And it just uh, 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 give you the shopping list, which you want and move it to the cart component. And how does it work? It has a, a memory, especially to the that component and this is called the state. So you can think of a, that is like a state is a living memory of your particular component. And each component has there will be an uh, own state. So this FAQ item, this thing, and if you define a state into the FAQ item.jsx, it doesn't matter like how many times you call into your app.jsx, each FAQ item has its own memory and this memory is called as a state right uh, did you understand this thing like what is this the state means in react 
So a state is nothing. A state is just an a memory allocation to a particular component. And each component will be have their own memory, which is called state. And for accessing the state thing, we will use a hook called use state provided by React. So your question will be like, hey, hello, what is hook, right? So what is, uh, what is this hook or use state hook or whatever hook you listen? So hook is nothing. Hooks lets you hook into the React feature. Like hook is just a function which lets you hook into the React feature. And what is the React feature? One of the React feature is that, like uh, one of the React feature is this state thing. So what does use state uh, uh, give you? Like it give you a hook that lets you access this state in the function component. And just remember one thing, you can't use hook into the class component because class component already have a method called a state. You can define a state function uh, into your constructor and you can update it using the set state method provided by the React. But in function component, you can't access the set state function. And for that, this hooks con concept is introduced so that in, uh, who, in the function component, you can access this uh, feature, which is provided by the React. I think now you understand eh, what is the hook is and why we are using the use state hook because we want to use the state feature into our function component and that's why we are using hook. And hook is the, uh, and we can't use the this dot set state method into the function component. That's why we are using hook. Does it make sense? Like what I have just spoken. And another thing, like whenever you update the state, your component will be get rendered once again. So you store something into your state and once you updated the state, your component will re-render automatically by the React. And those uh, new, uh, new feature or new state will get rendered to your UI. You just have to keep into your mind. And if you want to change anything into your component, you have to put those things into the state. So if you want to make some modification into your component, like uh, you want to add, uh, like you uh, go to your Shopify and add a mobile, like an iPhone 13, and you want two of them. So what you will do, you just click on the increment meter and it's uh, incremented twice. That's why, so this increment method has an state and this is the modification when you are clicking, you are modifying the state and that uh, modification state read under the component and then you see the two or three or whatever you want, whatever you see after the number of times you click. So whenever you try to mutate any particular behavior of the component or UI behavior, you are mutating the state. And whenever you mutate the state, the component will re-render. It happens into the same into the model. Like when you click into any model, it just open. And when you click the close, it just close. And it's all happened due to the state. Does it make sense? I think so. So let's uh, use our state into our app.js. Like, let's see how we can use that and how it's done. So first, like, now you have to import use effect. No, not use effect. Use a state from React. This is the hook. And we'll just write const FAQ list set FAQ list. And one thing remember, like uh, all the hooks, uh, hook function returns an array and this array has two value. The first one will be the value related to that particular state. 
a second will be a setup function which you call for updating the value so let me show you so uh, when you do that let me show you at that point like use use state and you pass an array and you pass an array this thing right Okay, so uh, the FAQ list has this initial value. This use state will return two, two method, uh, two value. The first one will be the first thing, uh, the particular value of that state. And the second thing, this set FAQ list will be a function which is called to update. So if you want to update the FAQ list, you have to call set FAQ list and you have to pass the whatever you want, like my name, whatever. Like whatever you want to be the value of FAQ list, you have to pass it in the set FAQ list function. Is everybody like understand what I have done there? What is your state and why you are using? Can anybody write like Marcus has the thumbs up? Can anybody or another man can confirm it? That's good, I think. Okay, so now you understand like this no one of sector. Okay, so now now we have this estate like FAQ list has this thing. So we might have want to refactor it. So we do not want this question and answer to be here. So what we'll do is like, we'll just delete this thing because we do not want it. And to go into like, now we want to access this FAQ list. So how we can do it? Like for accessing the FAQ list, we have to go into the JavaScript world and the JavaScript world will be went by just putting the curly braces in the JSX. And then we are, what we are going to do? We are going to do the FAQ list dot map because FAQ list is an array and you want to map over it and call FAQ item for each, FAQ item component for each item. So what we'll do? So, we have this thing, we have an item, item is a function, and what we want to return is a FAQ item component, right? An FAQ item, like I can show you, like, let's see. Uh, nothing is there because we are passing the FAQ item with no properties. Let's see, like what you have done. If you go to the console, you can see like uh, the prop answer is mark required in FAQ item, but its value is undefined, same for questions. So now you understand like why we need the prop types because it validate, like if it does not provide the question and answer, it will give you uh, an warning. So hey, why it's not happening anything? You can just go to the console like, hey, I have to provide an answer or a question. So you go to the app judges, FAQ items, we just did question and you just pass item dot question property. Now we get the question, but not the answer. And if you see, you have this thing, the prop answer is marker required in effect. Like, and I can just reload to show it like. You see, fail prop tab, the prop answer is marked as requires an FAQ item, this is, but its value is undefined. So you can just go there, answer item, the answer. If you go now, we have the question and the answer. And you know, I will explain the key, in, key like some sometime later, but it's just the way like which you tell reacts like, 
uh, since we are using the map function and we are creating this FAQ item, the React wants to know, want to differentiate between the first instance and the second instance, like the, uh, the first time it's called for the first item and the second item for this thing, like it's called twice. So just want React reference so that it can compare if nothing is changed. So we'll provide an index and we'll provide the key for it is complaining index. If you want to understand the key, you have to go deeper into that. So, so now you see, we do not get any console error and we have the question and the answer, the question and the answer. Are we on the same page? Or do you have any questions? Okay, so now here is your turn. Now you have to use the state and everything. So here is the exercise. To save a space in the view, we want to show and hide answer when you click on the question. Add a state variable to FAQ item component, which keep the state of answer being shown or not and adjust the renter method so or hide the answer. So what you have to do is like create a state variable, right? And based on this state, we want to show and hide this answer. So once you click it, the answer will be shown. And once, uh, and once uh, you do not, uh, and once you click it once again, it will be hidden. So it will be like toggling. Like when you click, it shows. When you click, it's hide. Click, hide and so so you have to do this thing so it's your turn to use the use a state hook and implement that so just create a, a state which keeps the track of this clicking things if it's true so the answer if it's false hide the answer i'll give you like three minutes to do that you do not have to do anything just use the use a state and you are good Did you understand your exercise? Like what you have to do? I think that just create a use a use a state hook, create a state hook and based on that, uh, so the answer or hide it. Are you able to do that? Anyone? Nice. Anyone else other than Marcus?
Okay, so let me show you like how I'm going to do it. Like what you have to do is like, you have to go to the FAQ item. First of all, what we have to do is, we have to import huge state from the act. Now we have to do is like const is answer. Set answer equals to use a state and I given it false. Okay, so what I do is like here I imported the use state from the React and then I used the into the function like I declared the use state. I provided the initial value and the initial value is the false. Like here, whenever you do the use state, you provide an initial value and this initial value is assigned to is answer. So the, the each answer contains the initial value, which is false. And uh, do you know about this thing? What you are doing this thing? This thing and this thing. This is called the array destructuring. This, uh, you can, <laughs> I do not want to spell it, because I do not know. So it is called array destructuring. Yes, array destruction, uh, what will happen is that like if you have an array like this thing and the first one is the alloc and the second one is like uh, Jacob and the third one is like Stephen. And if you want to access it, like let's see, like I can just show you. First, a equals to thing, right? You have this array. And if you want to access the second thing, what we'll do? Like we'll do a one, right? For zero, you will write a zero, right? And you put into something like const alloc equals to a one, const uh, Jacob or something equals to zero. But uh, JavaScript provide you a sort of function. Like you can just write const alloc j a, and you can just grab it from the A, yeah, right? And now you can access, like this one will be the A0, this one will be the A1, and if you write another something K, this will be the step N. Now you know that like why we are using this thing, right? Maybe, maybe you understand it, right? So why we are doing this thing, like we are uh, writing this open and closing box. And based on this answer, I'm going to hide it. So what we are going to do is like, so this is this thing, this is the paragraph. We want to hide it based on this state. So what we are going to do, like you are to going to, once again, for accessing the age answer, we have to go into the JavaScript world. And for JavaScript all, we'll just uh, put the curly braces and for accessing each answer, we'll just copy it. And if each answer is true, what we are going to do is like, we are going to just render this. Does it make sense? Like what I have done here. If this is true, then do this. If this is false, uh, if this is false, just return. So that's why how this and operator work. Like if it's true, it will give you the second thing. If it's false, it just circuit it out. Like it's done, it will do the short circuit thing. So let's see what happened to our app. You see, we do not get any answer because we are not uh, because the answer is false and based on the false, it is not showing. So if I make it true, the answer is there. You see, I think so. So we'll let it be false.
Is everybody able to solve this, this exercise? Should we move to the next chapter? Now we have one problem in our app. Like we want to show the answer once we click on this S2 tag. Like once we click the S2 tag, this false should turns to be true, right? So that we can see this answer. And once we click it, it should be hidden. So what we want to do, we want to mutate the you, we want to mutate the each answer. And how we are going to mutate the each answer from the set answer method. So just write a click handler. Okay, so just write a click handler which toggles this each answer uh, variable. So if the each answer is true, it should toggle it to be false. And if each answer is false, just toggle it to the true. So you just have to write a handler which toggles the each answer state variable and set a new state uh, using the set answer function. So your, what is your exercise? Your exercise is to write a toggle handler like uh, the way you write into the JavaScript which toggle the each answer state variable and set the new state using the set answer function. So you have to just uh, write a, a function here to do, to do write a toggle function which set each answer to true or false based on previous Value. Right, and you can you can set the value of each answer using the set answer set answer method. Please do it. Should I write it? Because I think I've given you enough time. Anybody able to do that? Okay, so let me show, uh, show you like what I'm trying to want to you to do is like, you just have to write a, a Toggle handler, so how we can write it? Like you, I, I, we, I told you to just write a function. So I write a toggle function, right? So this is the toggle function and what we want. Based on the is answer value, we want to set the is answer to true or false based on its previous value. So how we can set the is answer from set answer. So we call this set answer. 
and this is the is answer. Is answer. So what do we want? If is answer is false, we want it to be true. So this is the negation sign. What is that is like it's make the true to be false and false to be true. So we just save it, right? So this will be the toggle handler. So this is the only exercise, like write a toggle handle in the solution, you can see that. And now you want to just call this toggle handler, toggle handler when we are clicking on the S2. So for that, we can just call it on click. Toggle. Right? Let me show you. So what we have done, like we added the toggle function which set the is answer value based on the previous value. If it's true, it make it to be false. If it false, it make it true. And when we are clicking, we are passing this toggle function. So let's see. So we go to the React app, we reload so that we are on the same page. And once you click, you see the, you see the answer is showing and off. Are you able to do that now? Okay, so I think that now everybody will be fine, like everybody is, is working. So uh, the next chapter will be like use callbacks to delete an item. So now we have this thing, right? We have the, uh, the question and the answer, and now we want to delete it, right? So how we are going to delete this FAQ, uh, the question and the answer from this thing. So for that, the first, what we are going to uh, do is like, we are going to uh, add a button called delete button. When you click on it, it, it will be going to remove it uh, from the list. So what we, uh, what we have to do is like, or what you have to do is like, add a delete button to the FAQ item view in the FAQ item.jsx file and create an empty on delete handler, which is called when button is pressed. So do just one thing, create a button into the FAQ item.jsx, write a delete handler for that. And when you click onto the on delete, it should call this function, just write it. I'll give you one minute because we already know how to write a function and how we can uh, do the calling thing. So you want a button here, delete button, delete button. Are you able to do that? Because I think that that will be the enough time. You just have to write a button as you do into the HTML and you have to write the same as the toggle and it should be empty. You do not have to do anything. Okay, so let me show you. So what we have to do is like, 
after the age answer, we just have to do this button. And button should be delete. Then we should have const on. On delete. And on click, it should call on delete. Are you able to do that? And this is our app. Now we have the delete button. It's not working because we do not uh, we do not have written anything. But this is, is how to how it works, right? So do we move forward? I think so. It does not has nothing to do, right? So now we have to write the delete handler, right? So now we have to complete this function, right? So first of all, this question and is answer is coming from the app.jsx. So what we have to do is like, First of all, once we click this button, we first need to know that like on which button, on which uh, FAQ item uh, or the question we have clicked, right? So let me say, explain you like, first we need to identify like whether we clicked on the first item or on the second item, right? So for that, what we want, we want an uh, we want an index attribute, right? And where does this index attribute uh, should come? And it should be coming from the app.jsx. Other than that, we should know we are not able to know that like on which of uh, on which question we have clicked. So for deleting an item, we must get an index, right? So in the FAQ item, we should get a index, right? So this is the property. So we can write that prop types dot number dot is required, right? So first of all, what we need is the first of all, we need to know that like on which index or on which question we have clicked, like on which question we have clicked on the delete button. And this can be found by by using the index properties. Like if the if it's click on the first, the app component should provide me one, and if it's click on the second, the app component should provide me two. Right? Okay. So now uh, let's assume that we are now able to get this index function. What should we know, or what should we want more? We should also want a function which we call when we call the on delete function because we can't delete uh, the uh, question uh, from the faq item so what we want we want an if function which is provided to faq item right and when the delete uh, button is clicked it should call a function provided by the faq uh, for uh, for which is provided by the app.jsx and that uh, function should be responsible for deleting this, uh, deleting the particular question and answer. Does it make sense what I am saying? Like anybody, or maybe I, I will explain it once more. So what we want is like, when we are calling this button, this on delete function is called, right? So now uh, let's assume that we have the index. So. Now we know that this delete has been called on the first item, right? So in function, now we have this index. Index and index equals to one. So now we have the index like 
we know that like uh, we clicked on the first position, but we can't uh, delete it uh, at the question here by ourselves because this question is coming from the app.jsx. So app.jsx should have a method uh, or should have a function which is going to delete this function, right? And this function should be provided to the FAQ item. So let me show you like how it's work. Once you, will, I will show you like, then you will understand. So we also need a on delete as a property. Right? And what we will do, we'll just call props dot on delete with props dot index. Right? So what we are doing here, like when we are clicking on this delete button, this uh, function is getting fired. And this function calling a on delete handler, which is passed as a property from the app.js, we are going to fill it. And you can see that like uh, here, we have to pass uh, index and on delete, right? So may uh, so, this will be the properties like index on the on delete. Uh, from this point of view, you can see that like we are already getting it. So this is the FAQ item and this is the index and this is the on delete. And what we are doing is like, we are passing the on delete, like we are calling the on delete, which is passed by the app.jsx with the index, which is passed by the app.jsx. So let's write on delete onto the app.js. So that will be our third task, I think. Like, let me show you. So we return the handler. And so this is the thing. Like, now we are ready to change the app component to add a dummy on delete handler. Add the on delete handler to the app component, which logs the index. And OK, so I, I maybe just go ahead. But let's see. So this is the FAQ item. And we are calling with just the props dot on delete it is and the passing the index. So go to the app dot JSX. We'll just define a function called constant on delete, which needs index. And we'll for the time being, we'll just log the index. And here into the properties, we'll pass index equals to index and on delete. OK, so now you can see that. Now this FAQ item has two new properties. One property is index, and the second property is on delete. This on delete keep, uh, keep uh, keeping the reference of this on delete function, right? This index is the coming from the map function. Map function has uh, three uh, parameters. The first is the item. The second is the index, and third will be the array itself. Like if you access, then FAQ list should be there. Okay. So now FAQ item are receiving the index properties and also the delete properties. So what happening when we are clicking on the delete? When you are clicking on the delete, this on delete function gets called, this on delete. And what is it's doing? It's calling this function, this thing that props dot on delete. It's calling this function because it gets provided by this, right? And it's also getting an argument, which is called props dot index. So we are also uh, getting there this index thing and we are just doing the console log of the index. So let's see whether we are able to um, able to see the console of the index or not. So we go to the console, we deleted it. Then we click on the delete. Okay, so I scroll. Okay, so now you click on this and you get we got zero and when you click it's uh, we get one zero one zero one. 
are you able to do the same uh, what uh, i am able to do like when you are clicking on the delete you are able to get this console log did you understand that the flow like what's happening when we are doing all this thing like when we are clicking on the delete Okay. Can someone else also write like yes, no, or anything? So that I know that like we are able to do it. Okay. So uh, let me explain you once more time because it is an important concept and you should know that otherwise you're going to face lots of problem. Okay, so what we are doing is like, this FAQ list, it, it is present in the app component, right? It's done. For deleting any item from this state, we can't do it from its children, like this FAQ item component. So what we have to do? We have to create a on delete function into the app component, right? And we have to call this uh, on delete function from the FAQ item. So what, how we can do that? So we can pass a on delete properties referencing this on delete function. We also want to uh, also want an index like which delete has been clicked. And for that, we need an index properties. So when we are clicking, like we're saying that, hey, this is the first one, this is the second one. So I passed the two properties, index and the on delete. I added a delete button and when on delete got, got called, it just called the on delete function because we want to delete a FAQ item from the app. And we just passed the props.index, which determine like which props we are, like which uh, delete we will, uh, which delete we clicked. Now we have to delete this from the state, right? We want to delete the question or the answer, like the whole thing, once we clicked onto that FAQ item. So how we can do that? Like we'll just create a FAQ. And we are going to copy the FAQ list. Okay, so what is uh, here we are doing is, this is the spread QR. So uh, this is the array creation with the spread. So this is the array and we, what we want is like, hey, give me all the things which FAQ list has. So what will the this spread operator will do? It will just make a copy of this and put it here like and it is get assigned to the FAQ. Does it make sense? I think so. And then what do we want? I, we want to delete the object which is present at that index and how we can do that into this JavaScript. We can use an array method called a splice and a splice takes the index and the value which you want to delete. So let me show you like FAQ dot splice and here we want to put from which index we want to delete the item. So I want, I want the item to be deleted from the index. And how many items we want, you want to delete it? I only want one item to get deleted. And I save it. So what will be happen? This FAQ has a copy of this. Take it. The, this array. And when you pass an index, let me pass you index zero. So what will happen? It will go to that position and remove and delete it. This thing and uh, delete this thing and the resulting array will be stored to the FAQ. 
right? So you, it just delete this thing if you pass this thing, right? So what do we want? We want uh, the particular index to be get deleted. And we also want this FAQ list to be set to that particular list. So set FAQ list, FAQ. Okay, so does it make sense like what I have done? I just make a copy of this FAQ list. I deleted a, an object which is present in this particular index. And then I uh, setting the FAQ list with that particular array which uh, comes after deleting that object. Does it make sense like what I am just spoken? Yes, but. Okay, so why copy the list? Right, so why copying the list? So whenever you see the React, like whenever you see the React, like wherever everyone is writing, everyone will uh, tell you that do not mutate the array or the object. Okay, so what will the, uh, what is the real deal with this object and the array? As you know that array and the object point to the reference. So once you have this FAQ list, what does it mean? FAQ list is a variable which points to an object which is created. Like it should be stored into a somewhere in a memory and the memory has these two properties. Right, these two properties, right? And if you do not make a copy here, and you just deleted it, right? Like you can just make a FAQ list and a splice index one, right? So you do not make a copy of this and you deleted it and you deleted and you muted the original array of that particular thing, right? So if you mutated this, so wherever this FAQ list is using or this FAQ list uh, is getting access it's also get modified. So let me show you. So we have this app.jsx and we have one component called FAQ item, right? And we also have an author, author component, okay? Uh, okay, and it's also getting a FAQ list. Like, let's say like it says a FAQ list and you passed FAQ list. Uh, it is just an example. So what will happen is this, like if you modify this uh, thing earlier, then wherever this FAQ list is there, it gets modified, right? Because it accessing the same object because it's present into a particular index area or in a heap or something there, like in the memory. And when, and when you mo modified it, the real object, you get those things. And after some time, you also not able to know that like which step you have uh, done it before. That's why we always make a copy of the new list and the list object yeah, so uh, yeah, basically like dealing with that tracer, yes. No index error or other default point. Allow you to That's um, okay. Alok, I've just pasted uh, some code in the chat. I think if you don't want to copy the array, this should also work, right? If you just put everything directly into the set FAQ list thing yeah. without defining the FAQ variable first and just doing everything at once. That should, should also work fine. So yeah, yeah. It, um, it, the let FAQ is not entirely necessary, but the code looks also just looks better that way. No, 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 no. You have to do this. You have to do this. Otherwise, you will be okay. having a problem into the bigger app because it, it is the same thing. Like if you're not make, uh, making a copy, it will modify the original array. It is like, 
uh, let me show you in the console maybe uh, let me show you like const uh, allow and we have two object a allow uh, and uh, allow b checker okay right this is the object so if you do alloc dot a you get the alloc right you get the alloc a right and you define uh, another thing const b equals to alloc right you do uh, you do this thing now i will do this alloc uh, i think i can do this d delete alloc dot a True, and then I'll do this B dot A. You see, now we do not have any A property also in, into the B. So what is happening there? You see, when, uh, when you have this type of things and let's assume that uh, you have the same thing and uh, in the author or in, in somewhere else into the component, you are doing the same thing. And once you deleted this FAQ list, which is doing this thing, uh, and you deleted one thing and it will break the another component which is using the same FAQ list. Okay, yeah, yeah. You see, like this is, the, uh, this is the problem, like when you do not make a copy. Uh, let me show you one thing, like constant allow uh, equals to, let me copy the same thing. Hello. Equals to, okay, and then I define const b equals to, and this is the array restructuring. Okay, so what I am doing is like a, a here I made the copy of the alloc, and then I am deleting delete alloc dot a true, and now I am wanted to b dot a. You see, I am getting b dot a alloc. You are able to see that? Yeah, let's continue. Yeah, that, that's the that's that is why we are making the uh, making the copy of it. So so yeah. that we do not get a faulty pointer or anything. Yeah, I'm so of the opinion that this is probably not necessary because splice is a non-mutating. Yeah, and uh, that's why and that's why in React we always. Uh, tell that please do not mutate the array and object always create a new object and the new array and set it otherwise like if you deleted the faq list like you modified it right and do not think it is from the app uh, app.json think it of a, like a marketplace or maybe in the profile or in the sidebar and you modified the, the something which is present uh, way above and you deleted it then all the other component which depends on the same props will break because they do not find b dot a, right? But you once we make a copy, we already have that. That's why we make the copy. Okay, so I think uh, that's why uh, now we all understand like why we are making the copy. And please remember always if you are working in React, please make a new copy. Otherwise we are going to be have a bug which will not able to uh, detect it like uh, uh, into the, uh, like just seeing with your naked eye. And also like, I can, I will uh, tell you like, I can give you the thing, but you can see. Okay, then index on delete. Line 20 should be FAQ dot slide uh, splice, oh, yeah. right? Not because yeah. what we yeah, just discussed. I just written for this. And you click, you go, you see, like we deleted it. You see, like I'm deleting this thing. Why does clone need foundation? Okay, they the both are the same, so that.
why does flow need foundation? So I am doing the same thing. So yeah, do you, did you understand like uh, this deleting event and everything? Should we, I, I think that I should move to the next chapter because this is the thing like you have to write a dummy delete handler uh, which locks the index and then you have to write the on delete handler which removes the item from the list and create a new state. We already done it. I'm moving to the next chapter. Okay. So now what we have done, like we, uh, now we have a functionality of the app where we can delete the question. Now we want to add a form to add a question. Like you only have two questions, but we do not want. We want to add more and more. So how we can do it? So for that, we are going to add a form. Okay, so let, let's add the form into our app.jsx. So I'm just going to copy it. Okay, so I have to move this into the tab. You can just copy it from the training site. And now we have the form. Everybody up to this point, like now we have four form working on your local machine. It's just a form like form and also uh, make sure like you put the div and then the UL and then the form. Like this, you can just go to the this link uh, copy it. I pasted the link into the chat. Oh, they are just copy this whole thing. This and put it into the here. And we should have this working form. Okay, I think that most of the people uh, have done it. So now, now we can just go to our app and see what you have to do the next. So now what we want to do is, like now we want to manage the field value in the state. So we have this question and the answer. And when you are typing, we want it to store it somewhere so that we can, uh, once you click on the add button, it should be added into the state. And for that, we should have an state for this input, like what the user is typing into the question and we should have the another state for the uh, for the answer uh, answer also so what uh, what we are going to do is like we are going to add two new state one for the question and one for the answer we are going to uh, update the uh, state of the question and the answer by a on change handler respectively for the both question and the answer and we are going to track the track the user which is uh, typing into the state. So you are going to store all the things which the user is typing into the input or the text area into our component memory called a state. Okay, and, and uh, maybe I can just explain you. Okay, so there are two ways in which you can 
uh, in which you can access this input value. The one is using the control value, uh, control input, and one from the and one from the uncontrolled input. So you can see, like here, it is written, like add on generator to input and text, which will change the value in the state when the input changes. This pattern is called the control input. So what is the control input? So let me explain you once I am done. So what we want, like we want a two state, one for the question and the one for the answer. So what we are going to do is like, do is cost question, set question, use state and you initially want an empty string. Answer set answer equals to use state empty. So what we have done is like we have a or two state the question and the answer and the set question and the set answer right. And once you put the value attribute to the question, uh, value to be the question, and this is, I, this is the input, this is the text area, and value equals to answer. Okay, so now we have an empty question and empty answer, right? Just go to that. So whatever you type here, you see, I am typing like, I am typing, but it's not writing. You see, it's not happening. Do you know why? Because what we are telling React to do is like, hey React, this input field have this value and this value is coming from the question. And the question is what? Question is an empty string. So whatever you are typing, it's not getting typed, right? In this way, we are controlling the input field using the state and the value property of the input field. Does it make sense? Everybody. Okay, now I want to show you another thing. Let me remove this value. I remove this value, I remove this value. Save, we just go to the question. This is my question. Do you see? Like now I'm able to write. Now you are able to see. This is the answer. But it is not happening. Uh, it is not happening when you are uh, controlling uh, its value from the value properties and the state. And if you want to access this thing, I can just show you. Like uh, that will be a, a like a, another thing. Like you can access it using the ref. You can see into the React. Like you can use the ref, ref, and you write the ref name, and then you can do is like uh, whatever this the ref is. Then you can do the same thing like ref dot target dot value, and you are able to get the uh, the thing this is, whichever component, uh, like whichever input you are put, uh, like whatever you type. So that thing is called uncontrolled component because you do not controlling the input value. You are directly mutating the, or uh, you are directing access the accessing the DOM attribute. So we are not going to do that. We are going to write the control component because in long run it provides you accessibility, like more advanced feature you can add based on that. So we now have value and question. And now what do we want to do that? Like when on change, on change, like we want to listen, like when a user is typing, we want to call on change question, right? Oh, and uh, answer. So when someone is changing that, we are going to call on 
change answer and we are going to write this two thing log on change on change question and we are going to write on const on change answer and what to, what should be happen like when someone type something into this uh, input field we are going to call this on change question so what should on change question will do what should be the behavior of the on change question we want to set the question we want to set the question the same value which user is typing so how we can do that how we can change the state of the question we can change the state of the question by calling the set question function provided by the use step and how we can access the value which user is typing uh, we can access it by uh, by the event dot target dot value so when this uh, on change question is called it should be called by a parameter called event and this is where we are this thing and on event uh, uh, on this e which i introduced it is called event you can also write event event attribute and you can also write event dot target dot value and you can access the event. We, I, we can also see the console log of the event okay so let's see so this is the console and when we write something what is your name you see we are getting whatever whenever you are typing we are rendering one thing like what is your name? I press the question key. You see, we get a console. And once you open the console, we have this target. Target has this input thing and input thing has a should have a value. P dot target dot. And It should be there, like you can access it using the e dot target that value. I can just console log that thing. Even dot target dot value, and I can refresh you for that. This is my. You see, like this is the event dot target. It should have a value property. Let me find it for you. But uh, you understand it, right? So this is input and input should have this. You see, uh, we go go into the input and input has an attribute. Attribute has its value and the value attribute has this node value this. And this is why it's uh, we are getting this. Now you understand that, right? Like how this works, right? Now you have to write this same for the answer. Like just complete this function. I'm giving you one minute. Currently, when you type, it does not do anything. Here it is working. What is your name? My name is Alok. I'm typing, but it's not updating. So once you complete it, it should be working.
Are you able to write it? Like now it's working question and answer. Like when you are typing, it should be updating into the input field or text area. Can anybody able to do that? Yeah, seems okay. good, I think. Okay, then you have to just do, okay, I think, um, like how much time is left, uh, Jacob? Um, I think 45 minutes. Okay, so we just uh, yeah, do the same for the set answer. You get the event and e dot target dot value, right? Just refresh. Um, what is your name? You put the question mark. My name is, hello, Kumar. Now it's working, right? Uh, it's was, it should be working for you all. Right, now we want to click on this add button. Right, and it should add our question and answer into this list. Right, so how we are going to do that? For that, we already have an input, which of type submit, which is a value add. So on form, what we are going to do is like, on form, when the input is paste, and I am going to call it on submit function, it's going to call on submit. And on submit is going to call a on submit handler. Okay, and we are going to declare const on submit, right? It should also get an event. Now, what we are going to do is, first of all, we need to access the question, right? So we need to get the access to the question or what we want. We also need to get to access to the answer. What we also want, we now want to set this FAQ list to have a, another object with the same property, this question and the answer, and it should be added to that. So how we are going to do that? So how we can do that? First of all, let's do the same thing, FAQ. You can do the same thing like FAQ, and you can just copy it. FAQ list, right? And then what you can do, you, you can do like, uh, now you can do is like FAQ equals to, uh, now you have to do this thing, like you want to add this FAQ dot, you want it to, either you want to push it, like you can do it like that, push, and what you want to push an object an object with the question has the same value and the answer. So what will be the, this will, this is the short form of, uh, uh, short form of uh, uh, setting the properties in the object. If your object key and the object value has the same, then what you can do is like, you just pass the question and the answer and JavaScript will do it for you. Like question should be question. So let me show you all the thing, question this way, like this will be now becomes your key and this will become your question thing, right? Like this thing. But if your uh, key and your uh, value is the same, you can just omit this thing. You can just delete it and JavaScript will do it for you. Question. And then you can set, FAQ list to be FAQ, right? But there is, I think uh, I will show you, right? It will work. It should not work like, let me see. It should work, but there is one other problem. Okay, keep, keep attention. Like when I'm clicking. Okay, so something gets, uh, 
something is uh, wrong, but uh, you can see that like when I click on the this add function, you see this is getting loaded, this thing. That's why we are. So the effect list dot map is not a function. Okay, dog. Let's see what has it happened when I'm pressing add. Okay. So FAQ dot push, we want to push the, an array, an object with question and answer. Oh, it's not working. So do I... Okay, so I, I have done some mistake previously. I do not know. Set FAQ list. No, no, no. Okay, so let's see. What is my name? Let's make debugger. Okay, so now we are getting like I made some mistake, I do not know. So let me try, give you a try. What is your name? Right? And you type Alok Kumar and you save at keep attention. This loading thing is low. So whenever this loading thing loads, all our state in the React is set to the initial. And that's why we want to prevent that. We never reload our client side React app. Otherwise we are going to lose all our state. It should, it will be set to be initial. So initially we only have the two FAQ list. That's why you are only able to see only two and whatever we are setting with add it's getting lost. So how we can, how we can prevent that? So there is a, uh, there is a properties on the uh, prevent default okay so e dot prevent default and when you do that like let me see like when you click on to the add it is adding a new faq item with the empty list so let me show you so maybe i i can also delete it so what is your name my name is hello no. Okay. You click it. You see. Now it's added. Okay. But we have one problem. Like we want to set this question value to be empty, and we also want to set this answer value to empty. How we can do that? After setting FAQ, we will set question to be null. Set answer to be that thing. And we once again preload so that we do not have anything. So what is your name? My name is Alok Kumar. You add it and you see now we do not have anything. And when you click, it's, it also shows you answer. Does it make sense? Are you able to do that? Okay, so I want to show you one thing, like before doing this all thing, you can also do this thing, like set FAQ list, and you pass an array with FAQ list, and you pass an object with question, answer and it will also work what is answer okay maybe something has changed your name my name is hello let's see no, something I made wrong because I removed that thing. E dot prevent default. 
okay so now we reload what is your name my name is alok add you see it's working so you can also do this kind of, you can also write just in one line i can do that so it's just a javascript you can do anything you want do you understand that are you able to do the same thing which i am able to do it? Are we on the same level? Are you able to do that? I think so. S C S I. Okay. Now we'll go to our sharing. Can you please go away? Okay. So now we are go to so. So this is the thing which we wanted to achieve. Like we want to add the form, we did that. Then we wanted to manage the field value in the state. So we added the question. We now have the on-chain answer, on-chain question. We also want a submit handler so that we can submit it. So we also have the submit handler. You can go it by your own. Like form and submit. So yeah. So now we have these two reactors. Now we can add name. Now we can, and we can delete it. But we also want it like, uh, like you created, added it, but uh, what is your name? It's not, does not make sense. So I want to edit it also. Like when I, there should be an edit button once I am clicked, it should be editable, whether I will edit my question and also answer. And this will be our next chapter. Like now we have to add two modes for the FAQ item. So one, if we are in the edit mode, we'll able to uh, rewrite the question and the answer. And if we are into the view mode, we'll show the question and the answer like this. And when you click on the edit, we should get a form with the field of uh, what is your name and the answer and we'll able to update it. So how we are going to do that? So first of all, we have to create a state into the FAQ item, right? So that we can track whether we are in the edit mode or not. So how we are going to do that? So first let us declare that. So const is edit mode, right? And set is edit mode. Use a state and the initial value should be false, right? So what we are saying that if is edit mode is true, uh, uh, first we are setting a state called is edit mode. Based on that, we'll show, we'll show the form or whether we'll show, show the view. So if the edit mode is true, then we are going to see show the form. So how we can do this? Okay. So now we'll do, this is called the React fragment this thing, this is called the react fragment because if you want uh, two children to be in the react and we do not want a wrapper div or something, you have to wrap it with the fragment. Otherwise you have to wrap with the div. So I'm going to wrap it with the fragment, right? So now we we'll have to go into the JavaScript wall because I want to access each edit mode into the JSX. So how we can go that? I will just put the curly braces. Now we are in the JavaScript code. So now 
I am accessing is edit mode, right? And based on the is edit mode, whether if, if it's true, I'm going to show it the form. If it's false, I'm going to show it the view mode. So how we can do that? So if edit mode is true, we are going to say form. If it's not, we are going to Okay, so it's not refactoring because we do not. So if EG read mode is true, we are going to uh, show the form. And if it's not, we are going to see this. So this thing, the view. So how we can add the form? We can, we can add the form same as how we can do it for the app. So let's go uh, to the previous. We can just copy the form. Okay, we go there, we put the ally, and we'll just put the form. This is called the ternary operator. How it's work is like that, like true. If on the left-hand side, if it's true, it's going to show first. And if it's false, it is going to save second. This is the ternary operator. Does it make sense? Like what I have done? Okay. Now let's go to the, our React app. So we have our React app. But we do not have a button to toggle our on edit, uh, toggle the is edit mode true or false. So what we are going to do the first. Now we are going to uh, add a button first. First of all, let's give it edit. We do not still. So let's see. So now we have two button. Edit. And when it's clicked, we want to toggle the edge edit mode. Like I want to toggle this edge edit mode. I am giving you five minutes to do that. Like not five minutes because you do not have time. Another two minutes to just what you do is like once a editor uh, click on this button, add on click handler, create a Function call on edit and using set set is set is edit mode uh, toggle this is edit mode. I'm giving only two minutes for that, and you can do it uh, like the like the same way as is answer is done. Okay, so I'm going to show you like how I, how I am doing. So this is const on edit. 
now i am not go going to give you more time because we are already late set it is more to be this edit mode right and we call this button on click right so we go there we go have the app and when we click we get this question and the answer form right when you go it's refreshes that's why you're getting your edit we are going to see that thing right everybody able to do that like just just give me a confirmation now after doing that like after writing the form what we have to do is like we have to create a control form like an add form and pass on in edit handler to the faq item component like we did with the on delete so let me explain what does it mean so for uh, updating any uh, question and the answer we can't do it from the faq item itself like this component does not know it does not store the faq item list so it does not able to update the faq item list item list so what we have to do for updating is like we have to pass a callback from the app.js to the faq item so once the faq item updated its content it will be able to send its content to the app.jsx and app.jsx replaces uh, replaces that question and answer object with the new updated one does it make sense i think so like const on edit right i am just writing into the app.jsx like this on edit and we also pass this to the on edit equals to on edit so what we are doing since we are not able to Mm, update uh, uh, the FAQ question and answer from the FAQ item. We have to create a, uh, a function into the app dot app which handle uh, the updating the question and answer from the FAQ. FAQ, right? So we created it and we pass it, right? So now what we have to do in the FAQ item? First of all, you have to write it into the prop types on edit prop types prop types punk is is required and second now we have to confirm convert this into the control component and how we can do that First of all, it needs a value property, right? We see that. And it's also need a on change question. Okay. For the answer, for having to be a control, we need a value property and on change answer right so what should be the value i think we should not jacob we we can't hear you like your uh, your mic is like
this i wrote it in the chat this on change yeah 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 i am going to write it right this thing yeah you have written on change question instead of on change is on change okay. question yeah yeah so on change on change right okay this is correct yes like this is the same as yeah like on change and on change right to having the control and value so what should be our initial value the initial value should be our initial question and the answer right so how uh, what so what would be our initial question so you, we are already getting the question and the answer so let's fill it this is the thing like props dot question this is our initial value for the input for the uh, question and props dot answer will be the initial value for the for for the answer and we need to write a on chain handler so let's write it but i'm going to keep it on dummy this time on change question right Press on change on chain answer right and we can do this thing on change question on change answer we'll get e we get e let's see so we are wired up everything let's not do that okay so what we have done for making it control we have added value and the on chain the initial value should be the props dot answer and the initial value for the question should be the props dot question on chain we are calling on chain question on chain answer but we are not doing anything so we'll do it once we say what does it do so what should happen when we click on the edit you see now we get a field question and the answer right now we also want to update it now we are, i am typing but uh, i am not able to do that because because the value is not changing where it is this props dot question is not changing the props dot answer is not changing so how i can change the props dot question and the props that answer we can change it only if we have an state right so how we can have a state so we have to declare to a state so we will declare question set question huge Okay. Answer. And this time, set. We already have set answer, so we'll go with set question. Answer. Right. And we'll give it an empty, an empty. Sorry, okay, so this is the thing. Right, and now we have to pass this here. We do not uh, pass the prof that answer. Okay, uh, we'll pass this. Uh, this is answer, right? So this is answer. This is question. 
right? So now if you go, now we do not have this thing, the previous uh, state, the question and the answer. So how we can do that? On edit mode, we'll set, set question to be props dot, uh, props dot question, set question answer props dot answer right so once you have now answer you add the date now you have the question and the answer but still i am not able to edit it because we haven't written anything on the on chain question and the on chain answer so how we can do that we can do that by simply by set question a dot target dot value set question answer a dot target dot value okay so let us edit let's make it simply what is your name now I am able to edit it. My name is Alo, right? But still we do not have an ad like on submit handler here, right? We do not have a form on submit handler. And we also do not have this on submit handler for that. So for that, we are going to add a on submit handler. And first we have to do this thing. We do not want to reload our app. Okay. We do not want to uh, reload. And what we are going to uh, call it, like we are going, calling to call it like edit, which is provided. And we are going to pass the props. Props dot index like which index we are editing the question and the answer. The question which we are editing and the answer which we are editing. Right? And we are not calling on submit anywhere. So we'll go to form and we'll all need on submit. On submit, right? Does it make sense? Like props dot on edit is calling an index like hey uh, app I am going to edit the first uh, first question answer this is the updated question this is the updated answer please update it so what will app dot js is uh, going to do on edit it is going to uh, receive an event uh, no it's not going to receive an event this is going to receive an index a question a answer right and what we have to do we now have to edit the now we have to uh, edit the app.js to incorporate our value okay so how we can do is like first we'll copy the faq list so that faq list then on FAQ dot index, we are going to update the question and the answer. And now we are setting FAQ list with the FAQ. Did you understand that? I think that. Okay, let me show you. So on edit, Oh, I'm going to call, what is your name? My name is Alok Kumar and I press add. Maybe I make some change. Okay. FAQ item, on submit. Cross.only date, cross.index, question answer.
Let us say I made something wrong. Let me see. What I would add. Okay, so what I am missing is what it's it's working, it's setting the FAQ list, but in FAQ item, I am not uh, making it to the view component. So what I have to do is like set is edit mode. I think I am doing something. Okay, so I think I am doing what wrong. So I do it this thing. Okay. On edit, it should be true or not. Reversal, what is true? Sure. So it, it, it does not, it, it's not any uh, problem. It's just one problem. Like I mess it into the on submit. Like after submitting, I want to be on edit to be false. And uh, we want to, we do not want to see the form, but we want to see the question and the answer. So now I am able to show, show you like what is, and click allow to press add. And once you click on, you see what is allowed. Does it make sense? Or you have any problem, please ask. I just missed this set dot easy to know. Okay. So this is the huge uh, initial, like you have to go use the initial form data. So two modes for the FAQ item, we already Done it. So what we did is like we added the is edit mode. We created an on edit handler. We created an on save. On edit mode, we are seeing the form. When we are clicking on the button, we are showing this form. Otherwise, we are not. And then we have to control component. So we made a question and the answer. On the edit, we are setting the edit mode to be true, setting the initial question, initial answer. On changing the answer, we are setting the new answer value, the new question value on save, like when you add. We are uh, uh, calling the on edit callback, which is coming from the app component. And this is the app component, which uh, this is the on edit. So we are copying the FAQ list on the index, like what particular index we updated the question and answer, we are setting the new question and the answer value, like new object, and we set the FAQ list and we get the desired result. Does it make sense? Okay. So I think um, that- uh, Hello, is just... my audio video all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much time Thanks. do we left? Like, five minutes i think it's not worth it to dive into redux now um yeah I, so maybe we can, will continue with the redux or tomorrow i will just show you the routes you can try but i mean it's only five minutes okay maybe we can extend another 10 minutes like 15 minutes and then we can do that yeah, Are... not sure when when we will be shut down. Yeah. Sorry, one question. 
Yeah. Uh, are we going to continue tomorrow or is it another block tomorrow? No, no, no. We are going to continue tomorrow, but with the Volto one, this training, this training, which Jacob okay. will do at the same, same thing. And maybe Jacob can go through it. So maybe let me go like all the way and then all the remaining thing will Jacob will tell you, or maybe just in 15 minutes, I will tell you tomorrow. Does it make sense? So let me continue with the Redux and then I'll continue with tomorrow with the same thing, right? Right, Jacob? We can do that, right? Yeah, we can do so. I just talked to Paul. We might get another 15 minutes from now on, if that fits you. Okay, okay. Let, let's, let's do that. I, can, I think I can do that. All right. Okay, so what is the Redux? Okay. So Redux is used for storing the state, like what we are doing with this uh, use state thing. Like uh, currently we are, uh, like currently we are storing our state locally, but there are some state which needs to be present globally, like the theme. Like we want a black theme or white theme, and based on clicking on the moon, like all the dark theme and the white theme, we want to change all the colors and uh, colors in the background and the foreground. And for that, we are going to use the Redux. So that from that point of view, you want to use the Redux so that it is easy to manage all the component to get their data from the store, not with the this props thing, because now we have only two components. So we can pass this from the app.jsx, but uh, maybe we have a list of component, like a 10 component, then you have to pass each uh, props from the app.jsx to that thing, which is not a good way. So we might be, uh, uh, use Redux so that in Redux we'll store all the initial state and all the action and the reducer will do update the state. So first we're going to install the Redux npm install Redux and React Redux not Redux and React. React Redux and React Redux just for because you can use Redux for all the other framework like uh, view, uh, view, Angular, everything. And React Redux is the library which integrate the Redux to the React. So that's the thing which we are going to see. So we have now added the React and Redux uh, in our app. And, and for mutating the uh, Redux store, we need to create an action. So whenever we want to create, uh, Whenever you want to update our state, we need to pass a function called action. And this action will update our React, uh, like uh, update our state. So let's uh, create a uh, action folder in our source. So let's create actions. And in actions, we'll create the index.js, right? And in and the the first action will be the this thing like uh, uh, we want to add the FAQ item like when you go type it this thing question answer and add we want to create a uh, we want to dispatch an action which uh, update the store like hey I want to add the FAQ item with the question and the answer so this is the thing so I'll just grab it and put it in the index. So now we want to create this uh, create this action, and now there is uh, like uh, we need to create an action for the edit item also. Like we want a edit item and the delete item. So uh, I will just grab them, and I'll create this action. The action is just a simple function where if we run we return a just object like the type edit FAQ item type index. Like indeed FAQ item need an index question and answer. That's why we provided these three parameters and the delete only need index. So we provide the index and for the add FAQ item, we provide the question and the answer. That's the simple thing, right? So this is the action. And for uh, getting, updating the, our store, we need a reducer. A uh, reducer is a pure function which takes the previous state from the previous state and the action and returns the new state. So you can think that this reducer is a pure function. It just uh, have your state and your action just go to the reducer and tells that, hey, uh, this is the new actions which you just done. So what does the reducer do, do is like, it takes the action, update the store and returns you the, uh, 
uh, returns you the new state. So we are going to create a new reducer file reducers and reducers and in reducers we are going to create faq.js file and in faq.js file we'll do this simple thing right now a reducer will have your state and the actions right so now uh, finish the reducer so now we have to write an action like a write a reducer for handling the add, edit, and the delete item action. And we can simply do that by this thing. Like, let me copy, uh, let me, I will explain it. So what does this, does it, what does it does is like this. Hey, uh, FAQ is a function and function has this state and the action, okay? okay? And the state, the initial value of a state is an empty array. And based on action, like um, based on the add FAQ item, we want to make a copy of an array. We are doing it like we are returning a new array with a copy and we are amending a object, like we are appending an object. For edit, we are copying the state. We are doing the same thing which you are doing into the app.jsx and returning the FAQ. And for the deleting, we are splicing the at the same index and we are returning the FAQ. And this is the default, like whenever the nothing action passed, we return the FAQ.js file. So this is the reducer. And uh, now, uh, since uh, this is the reducer for only one component, if we have another component like the login, like where we want to store the user is login or, or authenticated or not, where we want to have to create two functions, logout and login. And based on that, uh, we can create another reducer called login and, and he will handle those things. And for combining those reducer, you want an in the, uh, combined reducer from the FAQ. Uh, like from the Redux, and we import the reducer, the FAQ reducer, and we'll just export the export the FAQ using the combined reducer function. So reducer has a index.js file, and it will it will just do this thing. It will just return the uh, all the combined reducer which will create. Like you can create another login component, another Another comp another reducer, like, like the same as the FAQ, another uh, login and everything. And you can just import it and you put it into the combined reducer and combine all reducer and all the state at the one place. So writing the test for your reducer. Since your reducer is a pure component, it just need a state and the action. And based on that, it will return you the new state. And since it's a pure function, we can write the test for that. that. So now we are going to write the test for the add FAQ item. So we'll just create a FAQ test.js, FAQ.test.js, and we are going to put this thing. We haven't done anything. We are just writing a test for the thing. Like uh, we just have a FAQ. We are calling a FAQ with an empty, like the, in the initial state is an array and we are passing an action. Like this is the action. And the action should, uh, should return me a state with a question and the answer. I saved it. And when I run npm run test, now we have two tests. Uh, one is failed and one is passed because we have to update it, the previous one. Okay, so you now see like two passed, two passed, like all the test has been passed. Uh, there, but value is undefined. Okay, nothing, nothing serious because now we are writing this for the FAQ, right? So this is the test of the reducer, like where we are just setting, a, we are just calling a FAQ function which is there. And we are just passing initial state and action. And based on that, we are uh, able to see that it will return an array with an object with question and the answer. This is what we are doing. Like where if you go to the edit, we are just having an empty state. So empty state and we just return this thing. I think it makes sense from what I am. 
telling you. So for now, like uh, now we want to wiring uh, wire the store so that we can manipulate our uh, store uh, using the action uh, from our app.jsx. For that, we are not going to uh, make a make a like we are not going to amend the app.jsx, but we are going to create another component called FAQ. And we are going to copy all the things which is in the app.jsx and put it there. So let's create a FAQ in the component. I'm going to create FAQ.jsx and I went to app.jsx, copy everything, and I put everything into the FAQ.jsx. And instead of app, I will call it FAQ. I haven't changed anything, anything at all, right? Like uh, for time to connect FAQ and we'll copy the exact copy of app.jsx, you can see there. And in the app.js, we are going to remove all the things and we'll put this thing. Okay, so what we have done, like we have uh, refactored the app.jss and put everything into the FAQ and into the app.jsx, what we have done, like we have uh, uh, created a store from the Redux and we pass the root reducer and root reducer is going to reducer and reducer as index.jsx, this thing, and it passed the, our FAQ reducer and uh, React Redux provides you a provider. We wrap our FAQ for the provider and pass the store to the store. So now that everything is wired up properly, like we have this store, and this store is uh, uh, configured with the FAQ now. So let's go to our React app. Okay, maybe this thing. Clear NPM and start. Okay, so FAQ do not have app.css, so we can remove it. Go to I can't resolve. Okay, so we need to fix it. It's from the FAQ item, I guess. So we have now all the things working as previously, like if I add, what is your name? My name is something, it's working. If you delete, like if I delete it's work, if I did, hello. We have just here, we just uh, refactor it and wire up the store. Now we are going to, uh, now we are uh, like uh, hello. We're really running out of time. Maybe if we do the most of the Redux part again tomorrow in a bit more relaxed environment where you can show stuff in a little bit more in detail, that might be a better idea because now wrapping that up in three minutes, I think is not really worth it. I think I can give you an hour or so of my training time tomorrow, no problem. So we can do that a little bit uh, uh, less hastily. Uh, would that be fine with you? Yeah, yeah, I also think so. Because... Okay, because we are now People are now around here for over four hours and also I think their attention span might be a little bit overstretched. So um, I think we should do it that way. Yeah. Okay, then um, <laughs> runs out of brains error. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, from this point of view, you must have this uh, understanding that, like we created an accent, right? It's nothing, something like uh, 
Yeah, maybe, maybe just redo this part tomorrow, Alok. It's it's a complex topic, exactly, as, as Marcus just wrote. It's not something you should rush over in like 15 minutes. Um, what I'd say is uh, we wrap it up for today. Um, yeah. And thank you all for attending. And um, I hope you will be back um, tomorrow. Oh, wait a sec. I'll show myself again so um um for for the next part of our training where, where alok will continue with the redux part we now had a glimpse on today and um then the next part will be the, the introduction on how to actually use the knowledge you gain today uh, to work with volto which I'm really looking forward to to show to you guys. Um, anything from from your side, Alok? Mm, I do not think so, but yeah, I will grab some time from you tomorrow so that I can finish it. Yeah, no problem. Then, uh, see you tomorrow, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. 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 Th